Sim. Hi guys. So my first lecture for St. Louis Chess Club on Endgame Madness, uh, and will be dedicated to a class of position um, that are fortresses when a rook and a piece fights against the queen. Okay, so called a pendulum defenses. So you see the position on a board when the base of a pendulum, the bishop on c2, and the rook is going back and forth between a4 and e4. So, uh, no nature of those defenses are very easy to understand. The rook has two squares to go to, never allow the king to come in, okay? Queen sacrifice is not winning, because, well, there are gonna be no pieces on the board, and and queen alone cannot do the damage. So the concept is extremely simple, but once it's put in on in a practice, there might be like a, you know, there are some tricks, and you'll see it. Uh, we're gonna go like to more and more complicated uh, situations, and uh, you'll see that even something very very simple like this can be. Um, tricky okay all right so here obviously yeah rook just goes back and forth draw nothing really to explain next one okay so not only bishop can be the base of a pendulum defense but the knight as well absolutely the same idea nothing really changes rook goes back and forth king cannot cross uh, the middle of the board draw the the only way the pendulum defense can be broken. It's some kind of a took turn. When the queen comes closer, and but uh, as long as the rook has two squares to go to back and forth, it's supposed to be a draw. Okay. So, all right. Another example of a uh, uh, of the pendulum defense. Now, as you understand. Uh, it could be bishop on e2, rook goes between uh, b5 and h5, and king cannot cross the sixth rank. All of, it's all the same. It is just a draw. Here, rook goes back and forth, b3 and d3. Okay. All right, uh, Coben, now let's see how it works in practice. Uh, Vladimir Akobin, uh, it's not Varuzhin Akobin, don't, do not confuse one for another, okay, another super strong, um, another super strong Armenian player, uh, leader of the team for a long time, before Aronia, okay, and uh, we're gonna go straight to the end game, th straight to the key moment where Black will have to make a, a key decision, and we'll see if the pendulum concept will be easier in practice. And you know, was an explanation. So here, okay. Uh, how did White wanna Queen? All right, this one before and black sets up sort of a defense. Oh, first of all, what uh, what what is the black setup? Where the bishop has to be and where the king has to be, where the rook has to be. Or making it a pendulum defense here. Where where the base of a pendulum should be. So that the rook has two squares to go back and forth. 
No, okay. bishop has to be on d8. Rook f6, b6, going back and forth. And, uh, so that's where the bishop belongs, right? King has to be like, doesn't matter where he is, and has to defend the bishop. It can be on e7, on e8. And the rook goes back and forth between uh, f6 and b6. If white king goes to c5, no, the rook better go to the other side, right? If king goes somewhere around here and threatens to sacrifice, well, the rook goes to the other one. And it happened for a while, okay? And then after a lot of maneuvering, after a lot of maneuvering, white will ask an ultimate question. h4, bishop b6, and g4. Okay, we saw an example of pendulum defense. Which way are you going to be taking this point? Well, make a wild guess if uh, that's a problem. <laughs> but I want you to understand why you're making this decision. What's the... Okay, you see what's going on, right? Anyway, we take in this pawn, the other pawn goes forward, and then queen eliminates all the black pawns with checks. Well, maybe not right away, but eventually. So, white will end up with the pawn on the king on the king side. So he will take all. Like for example, if we take h takes g4, I'll play h5. You will have to take, and I'll take with check. I'll take on f5, and I'll take on g4. And the same thing happens if I'll take with the f pawn. So the question is which way. He'll take one of them as a draw, the other as loses. So. You take with the h-pawn. You take with the h-pawn, and the reason for this? It ends up protecting your... The, the rook is not going to be attacked in the same manner as it moves down the board. Mm. Okay, so if I'll take, okay, if uh, so you're saying taken with the h pawn versus f pawn because the rooks will not be attacked. I think it, it matters whether the rook attacks or not. It's just, uh, uh, you mean that after, if I'll take with the f pawn, that f5 is a tempo? Uh, it's not that important because, I don't know, uh, even if it's not, it's, uh, even if it's not a tempo, it, it's all the same. What's important, it, which important here, important part is which pawn we want to leave for white to remain alive, F or H. So you see, I'm taking the pawn and then white plays like H5 or F5 and this pawn will be eliminated too. So only the last pawn will remain. So what do we want for white to remain on the board? H pawn or the F pawn? And it's very important. It has to be an F pawn, right? Because again, the base of a pendulum will be on D8. So the rook will always be able to stop B pawn and the F pawn. If we leave white H pawn on the board, then it just doesn't work. Uh, the rook can and the bishop cannot cover h6. You see that? So the h pawn will be simply queening. So the correct answer is this. Okay? Not the other way around. If, if we take in with the f pawn, then uh, just this. Rook f6 should not really help because. I guess just here. Okay. 
and this position is lost. If I'll have to take, take, because there is no pendulum defense anymore. Or H, no, rook and the bishop will not be able to stop h pawn, and this two, uh, really nothing against the queen. So correct answer is h takes. Uh, this is the way uh, Mikhail Krasenkov uh, took it, and that holds the draw. So takes, like I said, white picks up the rest of the pawns, but it really doesn't matter because bishop goes to the d8, and that's it going back and forth. That, that's the nature of a pendulum defense. Okay? If, uh, for example, if white had like a g pawn versus, instead of f pawn, that would be, position would be lost for black. Okay? Uh, and by the way, it's a good question. Was it was e pawn? Uh, yeah, it was e pawn. It should be lost too. It's just like a, this one. It's just, no, it doesn't matter. Why, why try it? But uh, you cannot win it because, well, as soon as the king goes to the one side, the rook goes to the other side, and then I'll start moving the king around. Yeah. So, king has to be close to the bishop. Uh, uh, king has to defend uh, the base of uh, this defense. Okay. Keep going. Uh, Shuba Pogorelov. Uh, yeah. It's the same thing. Again, let's go quickly through. Let's go quickly through the game. Oh, uh, white was completely winning in the, in the middle of it, and it's just uh, for some reason decided to to go to the end game like this, which still a pretty good chances, but after a while. Takes, takes. After a while, we'll end up with. Yeah, it's hard to imagine that Block was able to even get to this position. Oh my god. Okay. Boom, boom. Knight takes b7. Check here. Check. King is 6. e4. Okay. So we're black here, and we don't want to lose it. What should be the setup for black? What, how do we place our pieces? So we need to set up construction, so I want uh, I want you to tell me where the knight's supposed to be and when where the rook's supposed to be. Knight on e8, e on or rook on e6 and c6. Perfect. Yep. So you you got it. That's what black did, knight d8. Check, comes here, check here, queen g6, e5. Check, and through came to, and it's impossible to bridge. Uh, white will try, it's not, don't, oh yeah, actually, he, he lost the pawn right away. But even if uh, he would, like, uh, uh, yeah, if he gets to d5, yeah, but you cannot win the rook. Yeah, uh, if king gets to d5 and rook gets to e6, you cannot sacrifice the queen for the rook and the knight because king always defends it. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Uh, next one. Okay. Well, sometimes uh, it is a draw even if... Uh, king is breaching you know the perimeter and gets inside all right thanks to the knight because of like a, such a jumper and uh, possible forks it still could be a draw and this is a nice example that even though king is inside the construction and th 
threaten the base just because it's white to move it is a draw so check again check and check and you, you gotta go outside of the perimeter and yet go outside that's it rook uh, rook d4 d2 and it's like no longer can be breached all right okay this is uh, a problem uh, so yeah you see it's a problem from Malpass I think from 1945 uh, oh, you see what the problem is the king does not defend the base right now so and if base if construction is broken I mean it chances are becoming really really small so how does white get back into into the construction uh, this one doesn't uh, no check doesn't make sense I'll take with a check right so how does white make a draw here I guess the first move is pretty obvious. There is no defense, which is what? The starting move. Uh, if knight moves away, queen c2 picking up the rook, right? So knight cannot move. Uh, rook moves, I'll take a knight. So the only move. Knight of three? Uh, knight of three, knight of three, queen c2 check. And and right, ID is correct, but uh, while we move in the king, remember construction is the king has to defend the base, right? King to d4. King to d4. Yeah, we're going closer to the knight. Okay, black goes king e6. I'm still want to. No. Okay. And now. Rook f4, queen e5, check. So what's the second move? Not much of a choice. So uh, white is white is white move. It's white move. Rook is under attack. Yes. Rook F3. Rook f3. Mm -hmm. Queen d1. Uh, rook d3. Rook d3. Okay. Check. And king gets to the base. Yeah. It's like baseball, right? It's, uh, <laughs> get to the base, defend it, got it. Okay. Uh, and we got construction in place already and just a draw. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the exceptions to to this rule, like so, uh, where it uh, doesn't work. So we looked at uh, when construction works, and this will be when they don't. So Boris Gulko, uh, many times U.S. champion, plays black pieces, and that's from his early um, games, 1972, oh my, it's, yeah, 50, almost 50 years ago. So very interesting line, and Black is doing great, okay. 
white was probably was do, doing fine. Two, two, two. King g2, here we go. Takes, takes, and knight f1. Okay, so let's look and uh, try to understand this exception. So white sacrificed a piece and moves to knight f1. So it looks like he's ready to set up uh, pendulum defense with rook e3 and rook g3. The difference is opponent g6. That makes position winning for black. Why this is winning? Because yeah, because basically, well, and oh yeah, because we can go g3. That that's the reason. Yeah, if g if g3 was not possible, if there's no pawn on g6, that's a draw. But because of that extra one, uh, that breaches the like uh, defense, and this is a win. Check, check here, and no, it's winning in many different ways. F3, and just that's pretty nice. Took time, wouldn't be sound. And rook has to move. No, I guess it was not the only way to. For example, uh, queen f3 should be winning to here. But uh, Goko found like a really nice way to do it. Okay. Uh, Bernstein robot. Mm, let's see. What's this game doing here? Tun, tun, tun. Okay, check a5, a4, here we go, g5, g4, f6. Okay, uh, why this position is winning for black? If we remove a pawn, a5 and a4, just a simple draw. Uh, black will have to play f5 at that some point, white will take, and then create like a pendulum construction like pretty quick. Uh, I know knight can be moved backward, like to g1 for example. Uh, g1, uh, no, e2, e2, yeah. Uh, e2 and then rook goes between c3 and g3. But because the a pawns are on the board, the position is lost. So it's another exception for like why this uh, fortress doesn't work here. We will see pretty soon why uh, why it really matters so that uh, a pawns are on the board. So after like a long maneuvering, finally Black realizes he has to go and. Yeah, you see, uh, it's lost because black and white can only set up the pendulum construction on the third, right? But then he cannot defend the pawn on a4. If the pawn would be on a3 and we could have a rook on e3 and g3, draw. But it just doesn't work. And disconnected. And, and if it's not a pendulum defense, it's just an easy loss because no queen is too powerful. Oh, actually, he managed to do this and still loses. Oh, yeah, he loses because queen, king does not defend the base. Here we go, check. Yeah, the slot shit takes, knowing that that's an easy win. Uh, a pawn will cost. Uh, okay, keep going, load next. Uh, This was, okay, we're probably not gonna let, let's switch the color and go it on the white side. We're not gonna go through the whole end game. It just, I want you to like visually recognize if there is a chance for a draw or not. So 
right. So this is the position, d5. Takes, takes. Okay, so we saw the previously that uh, with a bishop on d8, this position is drawn because uh, with the knight on d7, it's still lost. So that's another exception. It's like, a, even though the, pretty much the same construction, right? Uh, there are a little twist. There is a little twist. So with knight as the base of the pendulum, two pawns are uh, hard to hold. Basically, the reason is because knight can like only cover six, right? And the board is eight. If board was six, it would be a draw. But with the eight, the king goes around and to the, gets closer to the knight on d7, and the rook cannot do both, stop the king from going in. And no, let, let's see at which point uh, the king was breaching the defense. It's theoretically, it's theoretic win. It's just, uh, you'll see, it wins on a Tuxvang. Uh, yeah. At this point, a, a white plate queen to d8 and you see how he cannot go to uh, f6 because I'll take it cannot go to d6 because of queen h2 and king cannot go to b7 because of a uh, queen d8 so it's a tuk twang position and uh, uh, he had to take here but now king gets closer to the to the knight the whole construction disappears and uh, white wins easily. Yeah. Okay. Load next. All right. Let's move to something like very, very simple. Uh, what happens if the pawn replaces the bishop as a base of pendulum? Okay. This is, uh, again, the rules are very simple. This is elementary draw. And you don't even have to like worry about it. Uh, rook goes back and forth. King cannot bridge. Uh, there is no took twang because, well, rook back, back and forth. Exceptions. Okay. Uh, no, exceptions are very easy to understand uh, by yourself. The rook needs, needs two squares, two defended squares to go to. So the only pawn that doesn't give rook to defended squares is what? A or H, right? There's gonna be only one defended square on G6 and B6. So with the pawn on H7, this position is lost. It's kind of pretty straightforward. Another exception that uh, you just need to remember is when the pawn is not on the seventh rank. When it's not on the seventh, but on the seventh, anywhere, uh, higher than seventh rank, it's lost. Because the reason, you can guess what the reason is, the king gets from back, from inside, from behind, and then it's a tuk twang. So l let's see how it works. Oh, it just, I don't even like, uh, no, I mean, sooner or later, rook will have to allow the king to go in, and king just goes from, you just need to know the, uh, mechanics, how it works, and you will figure it out over the board. Don't you don't even worry about. It. So if you know that uh, pawn as a base, uh, not on the seventh rank, but anywhere higher, even uh, as high as like fourth, uh, it, it's it's a loss because king goes from uh, from behind. Okay. All right. This is this is another exception. Okay, uh, looks like the pawn, on, when the pawn is moved to h4, I'm taking one of the squares away from the rook. And the rook left with only one square to go to e3. But uh, this is the exception, this position is drawn. So it's still there is something to remember. And, uh, and you might ask, like, how, well, why, how this knowledge is a practical, like when. Uh, uh, it is. <laughs> when uh, position is too complicated and you're looking for drawing chances, and uh, if you know that uh, f uh, 
F and the rook versus H1 is a draw, you can save a lot of end games like that. It's and really, you don't need to know how this happened. It, it's enough to know that this is a draw. You will figure it out over the board. Okay. So. Okay, let's see how it looks in practice. Uh, two Israeli grandmasters uh, played in 1994. Some interest in Benoni and uh, White won a queen. Looks like he's cruising to a victory. Uh, no, until. Not really. Okay. And D6, G5, and E4. Uh, we don't need this pawn. It's not going to check. H5, Queen, uh, F7. Okay. If you're black here and you want to show white that you know what's going on and that, uh, uh, that you're not going to lose this game, what would you play? I really love this move that the guy like was in the other guy's face, you know, I mean. There we go. Black. His bishop is under attack, I guess. How the black demonstrate white here is that uh, it is a draw, like I mean, it's nothing to play for. That he knows the principle, you know, of uh, pendulum defense. King to d7? Well, bishop is hanging, right? So we, we need to move the bishop. Uh, the question is like where? E5. E5, no, king g4, white will continue to play on. And, uh, okay. Nice yeah, I'll play king g4. Okay. Yeah, I just want you to just uh, see this. I, mean, I really loved it when I first saw it. Played bishop f6. So it's a draw, and I know that, right? It's just like <laughs> so. Rook goes f6 and d6 back and forth, and uh, that extra pawn on, on the side doesn't make any difference. The white cannot took to one black, and uh, if you don't take a bishop, go g6 g7. I'll take it there, but bishop f6. Okay, the guy. Uh, Alterman, uh, who was a long time coach to Boris Gelfand, you know, for many years, it just like, demonstrate like uh, that uh, he knows what's going on, and it's just a draw. So White tried. It's not like he, but I'm go back and forth. And taking on f6 doesn't work, and taking here because, oh yeah, because, like, let me just show you that uh, it's a little unfortunate for white, but uh, it's going to be a check. Oops, b5. f4, b6, here. Yeah, and unfortunately for white, this is a... Oh, actually, if it's not a check, it wouldn't change much, right? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there is white cannot cannot bridge. Uh, defense here, it was a draw. Safe. Uh, no. Ilya and Janevsky, Lasker. Uh, this game is extremely famous. I know if you know why. Anyone recognizes this game? No. 
Okay, last game of the game. Uh, the first game about psychology in chess ever written. I don't remember what's the name of it. That something probably that's what it's called, psychology in chess. And he gave this game and as an example of it. So, uh, Ilyin Janevsky, who was like a strong Russian master at this point, uh, played knight e2 here, offering queen trade. And according to Lasker in his book, like after queen takes d2, you know, even though for a modern player it's pretty far from a draw still, according to Lasker, he thought the position was dead even and it's a draw, but uh, Lasker wanted to win this game. And so what he did, he intentionally went for a worse position after queen takes a2. Queen takes a2 loses a queen. And here we go. White wins the queen. But Lasker did it intentionally because he wanted material disbalance. And so his opponent no longer can play for a draw. White is better here. And he needs to play. When you're better, uh, you need to play for more. Otherwise, you'll be worse. And uh, White lost this game. And uh, that's how it made uh, a Lasker book. Okay, but it wasn't that, you know, straightforward and clear. I think at some point, uh, at which point, by the way? Oh, okay, no. Uh, we already, yeah, we already the past, past the topic. Uh, it, uh, this game was a part of a bigger, uh, bigger lecture uh, that on Queen versus uh, different uh, material like rook and uh, rook and the light piece so let me see if uh, we got a little bit more of carries okay yeah so we change the topic a little bit at, uh, in this in those games it's no longer a, a fortress it's just a queen versus uh, a rook and the light piece. So this is the pretty famous game from 1939, Irving versus Keres. Check. Knight g2, d4, uh, f4, d3, takes, takes. Oh, I went a little too far. Yeah, okay. Uh, here Scaris sacrificed the queen with d3 for a bishop and uh, the rook and won the game. So uh, Ewe played rook f2 if he goes king, king h1 after rook takes e6. He completely paralyzed the black brings another rook, plays rook e2 and he's done. So he tried to do it this way, but uh, it's just too much. Again, it's a beautiful finish by Kerry, so it's another like classical game. It's a beautiful one. Okay, so, so let me see. Adams, Ivan Chuk. Okay, so here, uh, this game, uh, is to demonstrate that there are a lot of system in the opening theory, uh, modern opening theory, when one side intentionally goes for the end game down a queen against the rook and the piece. And, uh, because, well, they just believe that the other side cannot win it. So this game demonstrates one of those lines. So, I don't know if you know this line, it's the Sicilian dragon. Okay, queen d2, knight c6, d5, and if uh, white plays king b1, uh, the following thing happens. The white, uh, black takes on d4. And now if uh, white takes it back, after d takes e4, black position is completely fine, probably slightly better. Uh, but e5, that's the main idea of the whole thing. Now the knight goes away, I'll take on f6, the knight takes d5, and suddenly 
uh, queen is in danger because I threaten knight takes f6 and win. So knight f5 takes takes and knight takes d5. So what happens? I'm threatened to take on f6 and win the queen. Uh, if bishop goes away, I'm still going knight f6 and win. So it looks like a very difficult situation for black. Uh, what do you think he can do? How did Ivan Chuk escape from uh, from this tough situation? Any idea? You take and then fork when he takes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Queen takes d5. So black is going to the end game when he only got like a bishop and the rook for a queen. And I want to demonstrate that uh, it's probably black who's playing for a win here. Okay. But no, Michael Adams always been a good defender. He held this position even though he was under a lot of pressure. Perfectly lined up bishops, the rooks are all uh, totally participating. And now I want to go even for more. Okay, so it's not enough for him that it's a rook and a bishop for a queen. He says, "Okay, well, how about just two bishops for a queen? I'm not going to lose it." Okay, so extremely interesting conceptual play. For white, uh, rook d1. Uh, if black takes on b2, he's gonna lose this end game. But he doesn't have to take. It's just uh, nothing much that white can do. King is absolutely safe on g7. Uh, white has zero uh, winning chances here. So when you play an end game like this, so you definitely. Uh, it's useful to, to know all this pendulum defenses ideas that we discussed today. Okay. So let's see what else is there. Mamidyar mm, Brkic, what was that? Turn to, oh yeah, that's another uh, line uh, where one side sacrifices sacrifices queen for the rook and the bishop early in the opening uh, so let's talk about it a little bit more in more detail so queen c2 uh, bishop d6 no very well known position in the in the slav uh, i got i got the line here as it name after uh, me and my friend uh, Alexis Sheriff, it's called move g4 here. It's a uh, uh, Shabalov Sheriff uh, attack of its love defense. Uh, but there is this tricky move e4. And this is one of the ways black can react to this is to go e5. Takes, takes, e5. Idea is that after d takes e5, black castles and uh, well, I'm threatened knight takes e5, get the pawn back if needed, like rook e8. And, well, the only way the white can fight for the advantage in a position like this is to sack the queen. To go, it's a, another theoretical position. Uh, bishop e3. No, I know uh, when Mamidyarov analyzed this, Early, he he won this game pretty easily. B5, no black uh, already is in a in a very difficult situation here. <coughs> and Mamidyarov won like a beautiful game, too. Very impressive play on his part. Just one. Okay. 
<coughs> Gaspar of Anderson. Um, <coughs> another example of the line. Um, it's uh, in Catalan um, defense. There is this one, castle knight c6, uh, queen a4 takes, and white takes, uh, queen, knight takes d4. After this move, bishop takes c6, bishop c6, and rook d1. So the point is, uh, right now, if black takes on c6, then white takes, takes, takes on d4, then takes on c4, now, and thanks to those weak pawns on a7 and c6, well, white will have an advantage in this end game. So what Anderson did here, instead of going into this very unpleasant end game, he said, let's play this one instead. And even though you got like a mm, queen versus only rook and the bishop, all I have to do, he said, I only, I only need to trade A and C pawn for the B pawn. If that happens, I will easily hold like four and four queen versus because all those pendle defenses. And after a little bit, Kasparov, yeah, just here, rook lined up against the C file. You can win the pawn on A7, but you're gonna lose the pawn on C4. No, and then chances to win it are absolutely non-existent he didn't even try so this position is another like uh, it's not a fortress yet but uh, you know there would be like a, a even uh, remote uh, winning chances because power will continue but well he didn't so four and four or three and three rook and a light piece against the queen on one side Fortress. So, Smetslik so Wang. Uh, oh, yeah, there is a line in uh, Grunfeld, which is exactly the same that we just looked, because part of it, but with the colors reversed. So, takes, takes, same thing, but that extra tempo that. Uh, White has here compared to previous game allows him uh, to actually fight for more and White won this game you see how hard like a uh, black to develop pieces and now he finished his development but his queen is uh, no I mean after bishop d1 black will win I'm sorry white will win queen so this is what happened, very, very nicely played by a uh, Ukrainian Grandmaster. The, yeah, so black has to do this because the queen, uh, queen is trapped. Again, bishop d1, there's no defense. So the only way is to sacrifice to rook, but uh, no, two rooks and a piece. Is, is a winning position for white is with a safe king yeah it works okay and so let's see if there is some more oh yeah okay so this is probably the most uh, most famous example of this end game in the practice a uh, super, super uh, famous game of Keras versus Fisher from uh, Keras, was it 59? Keras or the, uh, But you know what I'm talking about. It was a Nidor, okay, which was Queen F3, Castle Knight D7, and Keras played this move, Bishop E2, which was which works very well if black, for example, goes h6 here, uh, right, h6, bishop h4, and now knight d7, then this is the best move in position. But uh, here, bishop e2, Fisher played b5, 
and nope, I, I'm sure it's one of the most famous Fisher's game. Okay, takes, takes on d5. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's like a uh, position, I mean, white fight, white fight for a draw, but the funny part was that after a while, okay, oh, white could have played better before that. We're gonna come to situation of a pendulum defense. We'll see it uh, right here, takes, takes, and through d4. So now rook can go back and forth, f4 and d4. Okay, Let, let's switch it to on, on the black side. So f4 and d4, and according to our like our rules today, it should be a draw. Well, the difference is unfortunately those points on the queen side. And even though white, a black has two points versus three, white's on a black position is winning. So, and Fisher demonstrated it's uh, an amazing technique. Queen c2. Yeah, so white king uh, overload is overloaded. He cannot defend the base of the pendulum knight on e2 and the pawns on the queen side. So this way, uh, pendulum defense does not work. So, a4, yep, so king d2 already queen b1, so knight c1, check, takes, queen c2, comes back, and yeah, the constructions, there are no more, right, there is no base, nothing, and queen simply becomes uh, much, much more powerful than the white pieces and the f pawn will cost white a rook so yeah double connectors win so this this game is is, is a very very famous and uh, no again after today uh, we know that uh, only the pure pure cases of a pendulum have, have chance against the queen with like a few exceptions and if we have like a two extra pawns on the, on the other side of the board, most likely it's going to be lost. So, and to the trained eye, it's immediately recognizable. And so, I guess I believe this was my last game in the file. Okay, let me see. McShane Aronian. Uh, well. Since Lewon is in town, so, uh, he probably be, would be better if he talks about this game himself. Okay, it's absolutely crazy stuff. You know, the white had like so many points for the over here. Uh, I remember when this game was played. You no, know, everyone was absolutely sure that it has to be a draw. Like with just way too many points. And it wasn't like if there is no pendulum defense, I mean, the queen is stronger than uh, it was absolutely crazy game. I mean, whatever it's uh, black one. And let's see if that's the end of it. Okay. Just, yeah, 30 seconds just for uh, to update your um, portfolio of like uh, winning and drawing position. So if we have a rook piece at two points, it's theoretically winning. And the, we saw it like uh, I'm showing you right now. I think uh, Caleb uh, showed it like uh, in his lecture. Uh, Carlson beat Nepo and like uh, exactly so uh, knight rook two connectors it's a win it's the long story but it's a win it's a theoretical win and so uh, same goes for the bishop okay same goes for for the bishop 
and what else is there okay yeah and then um, i got like a bunch of examples of uh, how the queen is stronger than the rook and uh, and the light piece but that's already outside of the scope of our lecture today and um, i think that's it and um, thank you guys for coming okay i hope it was useful so um it just yet another situation on a chessboard that uh, um, that you're now familiar with okay i would say to so my coach uh one of my coaches the uh, grandmaster bagheera was that he was saying that the only difference between grandmaster and just a regular player is that grandmaster knows about like 10,000 typical situations more. And this is one of the typical situations that we discussed today, okay? So another like 9,000 plus, and, uh, okay, well, I'm kidding of course, but uh, yeah, this is how, um, this is how it works. Uh, it's, um, just next time something like this happens in your game, I mean, you'll be better than your opponent. So I hope it will help. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Talk to you later.